What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight! Tonight! Okay, making their debut on the channel tonight! Tonight! We have Epica. Yes, indeed. How about that? Epica making their debut on the channel. Okay, this was a request from Rash Averick, Chris L., and Mass Attack 27. And this is actually one of Mass Attack 27's uh, three prioritized requests for the month of August for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page. So here you go, Mass Attack. Hope you enjoy the show, man. Um, this is a request for Epica with their song entitled Consign to Oblivion. Now, I've heard of Epica. I have heard of them. As a matter of fact, I heard a song from Epica. Well, it wasn't really their song, though. It was actually a Fear Factory song that they did. Um, try to remember the name of the song real quick. Uh, what was the song? Dang it. Time out! <laughs> We're back. Okay. Uh, I found out the song that they did the cover of. It was a Fear Factory song called Replica. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, I was trying to remember the name of the song and I kept wanting to say self bias resistor. I'm like, no, that wasn't it. It was, it was the, it was something else. It was on the same album as self bias resistor, but it wasn't that out. It wasn't that song. It's Replica. So I've heard them do that. Really nice job on that. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to hearing maybe some of their own material. I've, from what I understand, this is an original song, which is good. Um, have I heard this song, Consigned to Oblivion, before? No, I don't believe I have. This does not resonate with me in any way, shape, or form. However, there is always a chance I might have heard this song in passing, and I just don't realize it. So as always, if I start listening to the song and I go, wait, wait, I've heard this before, I'll let you know. That's the truth! You know me, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This was posted by Epica, and the video has 2.1 million views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Epica, consigned to oblivion, live at the zenith. Cool, the zenith. Don't know where that is, but I don't think we've ever played there. Have we ever played? No, no, I doubt it. Okay, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. The last one for tonight, but you know we always come back to Paris. Paris. Because we love Paris. That's not for tonight. Everybody, you know the drill. Open up in the middle to create a wall of epic. Are we gonna have a wall of death? Nice.
They're playing around with time signatures, which is really cool. Um, they're going into... Now, there's two ways you could... You, there, okay, so there's 15, right? There's two ways we could be looking at this. Uh, they're doing, you know, 4-4 four, four with a measure of 7-8, or they're doing just 15-8. You know, it, you can look at it either way you want. It's It works either way. Um, probably for simplicity, they're probably doing 15-8 in a couple of sections, but then they go into a straight four for a section, which is really cool. I like it when bands do that it, because, and I'll tell you why I like it when bands do that. Um, it keeps the attention of the listener. It keeps the attention vested. It keeps the, the listener engaged because it makes the listener go, what's coming next. They don't fall into that lull of four, four through the entire song where everybody's just like, okay, going along, nothing to worry about, we're just going to coast. And I, I mean, no, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, I like it when bands do mess around with time signatures like this, and they'll switch, you know, 15-8 to 4-4, four, four, back to 15-8 to 4-4. Four, four, for, you know, do a phrase of 15-8 and then do a phrase of 4-4. Four, four. So, I, I dig that. I absolutely dig that. Um, let's keep going here. she goes over to the keyboard player and feeds him the mic. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> at the other time, at the same time, her other hand's like conducting him. Hold it! Yeah. <laughs> um, I like what I'm hearing from this band. I, I like the direction that they're going. Um, uh, the, the contrast in vocal styles, you got the low growling from the, one of the guitar players, the operatic style singing of the female lead vocalist, uh, the addition of the keyboard player reinforcing the the growl and the and the and the uh, the grit uh, on that one section. You know he's done it twice now, but it's that one part. That's you know just reinforcing. That's kind of cool. Um, what I'm hearing is really good. What I'm seeing, what I'm watching, it's not bad. It's not horrible. I've seen worse, but. I feel like there's a lot of missed opportunities uh, from a live performance standpoint to engage with the crowd and to create energy on stage. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll change. We still got why what? Oh man. I didn't know the video was this long. <laughs> I didn't look at the time. Uh, we still got over six and a half minutes to go. This is a long video. Okay. Well, you know how I feel about long videos. I got no problem doing them as long as they entertain the hell out of me. Um, so far, it, it's doing a pretty good job. It's a pretty good job. Let, let's keep going here. Come on. 
I know people are probably wondering, what do I think about that lead singer? What do I think about her range? What do I think about her technique? It's really good. It's really good. Uh, she's got a phenomenal range. Obviously, classically, operatically trained. I mean, there's no question about that. Um, she's doing everything right from a vocal standpoint. Uh, she is uh, hitting all the notes on pitch, in key, uh, great clarity. Uh, definitely got that open throat, uh, projection going, which is nice. Um, amazing range, absolutely amazing range. And I am absolutely bored watching her. I said it. I am bored to death watching her. She is literally standing there, both hands on the microphone, singing into the mic. That is all she is doing when it comes to her performance. It's not fun to watch. Luckily... We have the guitar players and the bass players doing a fine job of trying to engage the crowd. But here's the thing. When you're the front man, or in this case, the front woman of a band, whose job is that? That is the front man's job. That is not the bass player's job. That is not the guitar player's job. That is the lead singer's job. The front man's job is to be up there at the front of the band, leading the band, engaging with the crowd. She is a fine vocalist. I give her all the credit in the world for being an amazing vocalist. As a front person, I'm not digging it. I am not buying it. I'm just not. I think the lead guitarist is doing a far better job of being a front man than she is. I'm just not, I'm not buying the performance. Uh, not to take anything away from her technique, not to take anything away from her talent as a vocalist. But as a performer, as a front person in a metal band, come on. You can do better than that. Anyway, let's keep going here. Oh, yeah, you guys fucking rock. Thank you, guitar Thank player. Thank you so much for this fantastic evening. We'll see you all soon again.
wait, 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 time out. Am I seeing things? Hold on. I'm not seeing... Wow, man, freak out! The keyboard platform is on a track. Oh my God! I've never seen that before. I've seen the spinning keyboard. I've seen that before. Uh, the lead keyboardist from Sti uh not the lead keyboardist, the keyboardist from Sticks has that. He has the spinning uh, keyboard platform. I I've seen that, but I've never seen a keyboard platform on a track that can move side to side across the stage. That is cool. Oh man, that is cool. On stage left. And now he's shifting up. Yep. And now he's on stage right. That is awesome. They're putting on a show. They're putting on a show. Um, they're moving around. They're engaging the crowd. In particular, that keyboard player who is doing something extremely brave that not a lot of keyboard players are ever willing to do. He's not playing. So what does he do? He leaves his keyboard, runs down to the front of the stage, across the stage, back up to the other side of the stage, and then runs back across to get back on his keyboard again. Movement! Motion! Energy! Physics! It's not hard! It's really not that difficult. But so many keyboards are petrified to leave their little station. Oh, I can't leave my keyboard. What if I need to play? You're not playing for, like, seriously, there's like 24 measures. You're not playing? Do something! Don't just stand there and wait. Move around. Engage the crowd. Do something. And this guy's doing it. Um... Guitars, bass, all doing a great job. Of course, they're playing their instrument. They can't do a whole lot of pointing, but what they are doing is they're leaning into the crowd, looking into the crowd, using their face to engage with the crowd. Fantastic job. I have one other point I want to make. Where's that female vocalist? Where'd she go? You know, the funny thing is, I don't miss her. She's not missed. Now, who can argue with that? I'm too busy watching everybody else. I'm too busy enjoying the show that's happening right now. Listening to some amazing riffs, some great subdivisions, uh, some great unison lines, and she's nowhere to be found. 
And to be perfectly honest with you, I don't care. I could care less that she's on the stage. I'm enjoying what there's on stage right now. So, anyway, let's keep going. she doing this kind of stuff at the beginning when she was okay first of all she's up at the front of the stage now where she should be the whole first part where she was on stage she was in the back and i do not understand why as the lead vocalist you would be in the back you should be up at the front and all she did was stand there with two hands on the mic singing and it's just like well that's great and all but where's the showmanship where's the leading where's the leadership so now she's come back on stage. She's up at the front. She's using her arms. She's moving. She's engaging. She's far more entertained to watch now than she was when she was just standing back there. And the thing is, the quality of her vocal performance didn't diminish one bit. Her vocals are just as good as they were when she was standing back there. So all the people, they're going to be like, well, she needs to stand back there and she needs to stand still so she, so she can execute proper technique and she can hit her nose correctly. B.S. No, she doesn't. She's doing it right now. Up at the front of the stage, interacting, moving, creating energy, being a showman, being a front man, and she's doing a fine job of that on top of keeping up with all of her vocal techniques. So don't sit there and try to tell me, oh, she has to be back there to, you know, make sure that she hits every note perfectly. Wrong. No, she doesn't. She's doing it fine right here. I wish she had done this the entire performance. Ah, anyway, let's, let's, let's finish. Let's just finish. Oh, lady, why weren't you up at the front doing that the whole time? Merci beaucoup, Barry. This is the last song of the set, I'm assuming. Yeah, I'm guessing that was the last song of the show. Nice way to end. Good ending. Um, I have mixed feelings. I do. Um... I've already said everything I want to say, but I, eh, I don't know. I'm having some second thoughts. Give me a couple of minutes. I need, I need to sort some stuff out. I'll see you in the review. Much, much later. Well, there you go, folks. That was Epica with Consigned to Oblivion. Uh, this was a request from Rash Averick, Chris L., and Mass Attack 27. And like I said before, this is one of Mass Attack 27's uh, three prioritized requests for the month of August for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page. So there you go, Mass Attack. Hope you enjoy the show. Um, on a scale of one to 10, uh, I had to think about this and I had to take everything into account. And I mean everything, and I, I did. I took every single aspect of what I watched and what I heard into account here. Being a live performance, of course I'm going to take into account what I see. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that an 8.5. Yup, 8.5. I feel good about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? 
This was a top-notch performance. It really was. Uh, from the instrumentalists. And, and to some extent, from the lead vocalist. I'm going to get to her in a second. Um, let's talk about the song first, okay? Great use of time signature. Uh, great use of subdivisions. Great use of switching up uh, time signatures within those subdivisions to create different uh, different phrasings, which I found to be very enjoyable. Um, you know, the whole 15-8 to 4-4 to 15-8 to 4-4, I heard a part where it sounded like it was 5-4, but it was subdivided to be like 10-8. And that was really cool. That was very cool. Uh, and that was in the bridge, if I'm not mistaken. Um, now, overall, I really enjoyed the songwriting on this. There were some great unison riffs, some great unified, uh, subdivided uh, riffs that were fantastic, where everybody was playing the exact same thing at the exact same time. Really nicely done. Other times, it was just guitar and bass and keyboard subdividing against the drums, which I, I dig as long as it lines up, and it lined up perfectly. Um, no, songwriting, fantastic. I have nothing negative to say about the songwriting whatsoever. Uh, guitar playing, clean, solid, great tone from both guitars. Bass, couldn't really hear it too clearly. Um, I, 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 there were a couple points where I did hear it a little bit, but for the most part, it was kind of getting buried. And when you're doing a live performance, that's not, that's not unusual. It's pretty typical to hear bass kind of get buried, so it's... I'm, I'm not upset. It's I, I was kind of expecting that to happen. Uh, keyboard coming through very nicely. Some great patches. Uh, great playing. Very nicely done playing. What I liked about the keyboard player more than anything else is he knew when to play, but more importantly, he knew when not to play. There were parts where he would lay out completely for entire phrases at a time. And I'm going to come back to that in a little bit. But uh, it was really smart of him to know, yes, when to play, but more importantly, when not to play. Very, very smart move. Vocally, uh, hearing the different vocals and the contrast in the vocals, I always like hearing that. I always like hearing the contrast in vocal style between, like, uh, someone with a growl and grit and someone with a clean. You know, whenever you hear those type of things, it's really cool. And the and the fact that the clean voice was like an operatic female voice, that, even, that made the difference even more obvious. It, it was an even bigger differential, and I loved that. Uh, the bigger, the better, they say. Not going to disagree with that. Um, from the live performance standpoint, let's talk about uh, production. And then we'll talk about performance, okay? Production, really nice job. The lighting on this was fantastic. I love the use of the backlighting, especially up against those triangular, uh, I don't know if that was plexiglass or maybe it was real glass, I don't know, but you had those like uh, elongated triangles, uh, transparent, and you had the light going through them. That was really kind of cool. It was a nice effect. Uh, kind of made them glow a little bit. Uh, kind of creating almost an ambient light from the backlighting. I, I thought that was a very cool effect. Um, the stage lighting was well done. The pyro was nice. Uh, great use of controlled jets. Uh, just short bursts through, rapidly through multiply angled jets to make it look like the fire was moving. Very cool. Very well done. Takes a lot of programming and a lot of time to make that happen. And so it's, it's not easy, but they did a fine job on it. Um, the way the stage was constructed, I like that construction. I like having that, the back with the side ramps coming down to the center of the stage with the drums right in the middle of it. Um, I've seen several bands do that. Uh, Kiss did that for, uh, I forgot what tour it was. I think it was the Hot in the Shade tour. They had something like that. Uh, Judas Priest has had a stage set up like that during the, uh, Electric Eye uh, not the Electric Guy, uh, Screaming for Vengeance Tour. They had their stage set up like that as well. I believe Iron Maidens had their stage set up like that. Um, I forgot what tour that was. I think it was the Somewhere in Time Tour. If I'm not mistaken, they may have had it like that. But that, that like, that's like a, I don't know what's six-sided, like elongated hexagon, basically. It, very cool. I, I dig that setup. I love that setup. Uh, if we ever get the money together and, you know, we're able to tour with a setup like that, I would love it. But that is not easy to construct. It's not cheap. So uh, I would love to play on a stage that's set up like that, though. Fun. Good. A lot of options. Lots of options for movement and motion on stage. Speaking of which, 
Let's get to that performance, shall we? Ah, uh, guitar, bass, fine job. Really nice job on their part. Doing everything they could to be entertaining. Inter inter uh, interacting with each other, interacting with the crowd using facial expressions, um, doing everything they could to be engaging. And I gotta respect that. Absolutely, I loved watching that. The keyboard player was definitely the highlight for me. Uh, whenever he wasn't playing, I talked about that earlier, when he had those spots where he wasn't playing, he didn't just stand there. He moved away from his keyboard and he ran down the ramp. Zoom, zoom, came across the stage, up, up, back to his keyboard. That was really cool. Also, the fact that he had a he had a setup with his keyboard that I've never seen before. I've never seen a keyboard on a track before that moved across the stage. That was cool. That was the first time I've ever seen that done, and that was a lot of fun to see. It's now here's the thing. It's giving me ideas for our keyboard player. So. That's fantastic. And what, am I going to steal that idea? You better believe I'm going to steal that idea. Look, we're all thieves. All of us are thieves. Ozzy Osbourne said it. Let me kill Meister said it. We're all thieves. You know, everybody is stolen from everybody. You better believe I'm going to steal that. You better believe it. Um, that was a lot of fun to watch, you know. Everything was a lot of fun to watch except for that lead vocalist. She was boring. That first half of the song, she just stood there. And I know a lot of people are going to come to her defense and go, well, she has to stand that way so she can sing properly and, you know, use proper breathing technique and support. No, you don't. Because in the second half, like the last minute and a half of the song, when she came back on stage, she was at the front of the stage. She was moving around. She was moving her arms. She was engaging the crowd. And she was still singing with proper technique. Good support. Open throat. Clear diction. Nice vowel formation. Beautiful vowel formation. And most importantly, singing in pitch and in uh, and on key. So don't tell me she has to stand back there. No, she doesn't. Good Lord. She did all the things she needed to do when she was up at the front. Now, did that affect the score? Yes, it did. But it didn't affect the score as much as I thought it was going to. I thought for sure having her steady back there was going to drop the score like a full point. You know, I was, I was thinking like this is going to go from like you know, it's going to go from an 8.8 .8 down to a 7.8. No, not really, uh, because she did come out properly in the last minute or two minutes of the song. So she came out to the front. She sang properly. She was interacting with the crowd, leading the crowd, engaging the crowd, being a front person. And she did it well. So she did do it. I just wish she had done it through the entire song. If she had been up at the front like she was at the end, at the beginning, and not hanging out in the back with the keyboard player, I think the score would have gone up to an 8. I think it would have been an 8.8, .8, possibly an 8.9. Um, I understand she had to be back there to feed the mic to the keyboard player, but not really. Like... It, they, look, they could have attached a mic stand to the keyboard and had had him have one. It, that was not necessary. Now, to have her do it was fine, but here's the thing. She could have been up at the front of the stage. Knowing it was coming, she could have run up the ramp, got to the keyboard player and fed him, and then come back down at the front of the stage. I think that would have been far more entertaining and far more effective use of stage space utilizing that stage space. I love it when bands have these huge stages and they literally don't move at all. They just stand there. And I'm like, you guys have all this prime real estate and you're not using it. Are you out of your minds? But I've seen bands do it before and it pisses me off to no end. Um, no, but overall, like I said, did it affect the score? Yes. Did it affect the score as much as I thought it was going to? No. It, not ever, it just... It dropped the score a grand total of 0 .3, and that's not a big drop. So it went from like an 8.8 .8 to an 8.5. Not a huge drop. Now, like I said, if she had not come to the front, if she had been back at the top again, just standing there, yeah, it would have gone down to like an 8.2, 8.1, maybe down into the sevens, the high seven, 7.8, 7.9, because she is the front person. She is the lead vocalist. If that had been the bass player, wouldn't have cared nearly as much. I mean, I would have cared, but it wouldn't have been nearly as impactful as having it being the lead singer. So, 
But anyway, I mean, overall, I enjoyed it. I would like to hear more from these guys for sure. Uh, I think they have a good sound. I, I like their songwriting approach. Uh, I like their style. Uh, I like their song style anyway. I know, I know their actual physical style, I can honestly care less about. But um, their production was good. Showmanship was good overall. Yeah, I'd like to see more from these guys for sure. So we'll see what happens. So 8.5, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you'll enjoy the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you did enjoy the show and you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to join the fan base by clicking on that button down there. Yeah, you know the button I'm talking about. Click on that button, join the fan base, and become one of us. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't feel like clicking on that button, that's okay. I still respect you. Also, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It'll do me a world of good and it will do you absolutely no harm whatsoever. Finally, if you guys do join the fan base, you will find a bell down there that you can click on. By clicking on that bell, it'll keep you up to date on everything happening with this channel, including when new content is dropped. So, if you want to stay in the know, click on the bell and you'll stay in the know. Well, that's good enough for the night, folks. Until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.